I'm glad you made time to find yourself in the presence of the Lord. The scripture is clear in saying that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And you need to tune yourself to God, position yourself so you can receive. We normally come to church to receive a word, isn't it? We come in sad, sometimes we come in uncertain, sometimes depressed, sometimes worried, sometimes not too well. Somehow there is the inkling deep within us that when we come to church, we'll be able to receive. And I'm hoping today that you'll receive. If you don't tune yourself, you won't receive. But if you do tune yourself, then God will send his word. The Bible says that the word of the Lord will not return void. God's got a word for you today. No matter where you are at this moment, God's got a word for you today. And I hope that you would listen carefully, listen intently to the word that he has for you today. It is an encouraging word. It is an uplifting word. And that's the kind of word we want. We want an uplifting word. Lifting us up from where we are. It's a word that's going to position you on a higher plane. Sick and tired of being down? Well, Allow yourself to be picked up. God picks people up and he places them on higher ground. Words. Words are expression of our thoughts. Words. Words can cut. Words can affect us. Word can encourage us. Word can bring sorrow. Words can bring joy. But I'm hoping today that the joy of the Lord will come upon you and settle upon you through his word. I'm going to speak about the word today and when we think of the word, we think of a person. We start by reading John chapter 1 from verse number 1 onwards. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Note, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Okay. His name was life, and the life was the light of men. And we go on to verse number 14, and we note it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is a very fascinating statement indeed. Right there, when there was nothing, the Word was present, and Jesus was that Word. And imagine him standing on a desolate earth that was full of darkness and huttering the Word. He brought things into being by just saying it or calling it. He said, let there be light, and suddenly light came. Read the creation story, fascinating story indeed. He called in all the animals, the giraffe, the tiger, the hippopotamus, 
all of the animals you like and don't like, he called them into being, and in seconds they all appeared, amazing feet indeed by just the word. Everything in the sea, the gigantic sharks and whales, he called them into being. The fowls of the air, he just said the word and they all came together. That is the power of God. God is the word. The word was power. We note that the word was authority. The Bible goes on further to say that the word is the truth. Jesus, the word is the truth, the way, the life. The word is hope. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God gives us hope. The word brings relief. The word finds the way. The word restores life. The word heals. The word comforts, delivers, protects, empowers. I want you to catch these words. I want you to note that your secret is in the word, that your answer is in the word, that your hope is in the word, and we need to have the word. The psalmist David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The word is that is that light that brightens up, illuminates, and makes the way clear. We know that the word is a message. The written word tells us about the living word. Jesus is that living word. The Bible is the written word. Many people claim to love God, but refuse to read the word. The story is told about a soldier who loved a young lady. While his affection for her was very deep, how she felt about him was not clear. In due time, the soldier was sent to a distant land. He faithfully wrote letters to the lady although she never sent any to him. Finally, the day came for his return. And upon arrival, the first stop was to visit the one he loved. While she showed that she was pleased to see him, a box of letters, unopened letters, showed a true heart condition. The letters were his. Our failure to read the word shows our feelings for God. We may say many things, but as to whether we really love God is known by our actions, is known uh, when we read the word. If we do read the word, we will notice three instructions grouped together. Jesus said, ask, you'll receive. He said, seek, you'll find. He said, knock, the door will open. Now, these words are not only about trying to gain entrance or access to God. These are action words for our everyday living. These are words that will open up doors and to bring in a life of abundance. It is said that many don't really catch this word and act on this word. And as a result, many years go by, many, perhaps a whole lifetime goes past without them becoming achievers, achieving things that God has in store for them. 
I am familiar with many people that are great prayer warriors. I'm familiar with their actions in, in that we become aware of their fasting and their long hours in prayer. And we thank God for people like this. God is wanting us to fast. God is wanting us to pray. And those that are obedient in this area are really, truly wonderful people. But they stop short of adding on a mix that will bring about the desired result. What is the mix? The Bible says that faith is good and faith talks about uh, maybe reading the word, faith talks about uh, praying, faith talks about uh, fasting. But if there is no action, faith without works is dead. The Bible is clear that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. And if we know about asking and if we know about knocking and if we know about seeking and we don't do those things, nothing is going to materialize for us and we're going to have a dead situation and we end up blaming God for lots of things. I know when I was uh, little, uh, I used to see my mom, she'll take a big bowl and she'll hold it in a hand like this and she will um, throw in the flour, uh, egg or two, um, she'll put in some yeast and, and a pinch of salt and then she will go and start taking a spoon and she will start mixing it and mixing it and mixing it. She'll add more water and she'll mix it and if she sees that the mixture isn't to her liking, she'll add a little bit more water and she'll keep mixing it and mixing it and mixing it and eventually she will make the scones or um, uh, make the pancakes or whatever she has in mind with that mix. Uh, God is telling us today, reminding us today that our walk should be a walk that's mixed with faith and works. And sometimes we walk with the, walk, uh, with the work itself without the faith. But we've got to have that mix. It's got to be mixed together. And if it is mixed together, then it will have the desired result. In other words, what I am saying here today is whatever you want, God has got it available for you. But you've got to link with people. You've got to make known your desire. You've got to engage in God's work. You've got to please him so he can please you. All of these things you need to do. Sometimes we, uh, we sit back, we raise our hands, we go outside and we pray and we say, God, you know what I'm wanting, God? God is saying, I know what you're wanting. What you're wanting is out there. You go and you meet people, you mingle with people. You start talking about what you need. And when you start talking about it, people become familiar with all of your desires and they will open doors for you. The doors are there. The doors are ready to be opened, but you've got to step outside. And sometimes we need to do something a little bit different. And if you are more on the young side, try and cycle a little bit if you can. Maybe learn to swim if you haven't learned to swim. It's nice. Maybe you can get a driver's license. Don't worry about you not having that car. But how nice you go in for a learner, you get a driver's license. You do something that's a little bit different. Become computer literate. Everybody's on computers now. There's so many people have house computers. Find out who has one. Sit down, start becoming computer literate. Maybe do additional courses. Maybe you're ready to start, a, start to do a degree. Maybe become business, uh, uh, pursue business opportunities. Um, Set your mind to read the Bible. You know, you ask people how long they're Christians, and uh, nice to hear some say, well, they've been faithful for 50 years, 60 years, maybe less. 
But pose the other question. How many times have you read the Bible? <laughs> Don't wait for an answer. Because the answer won't be a good one. But set, your, set, set yourself this year to say, look, I'm going to read the Bible at least once this year. Let that be a target. You know, you, you know we, we, we're so busy uh, with our texting and, and reading our WhatsApp and, and our WhatsApp and whatever and, and that kind of a thing. We don't really get into reading books. Should yourself to read a book. Maybe you read Melanie's book. Maybe two books this year. You can say, hey, I want to read at least two books this year. Whatever, whatever book, adventure book and detective book, whatever books, history book, whatever. And, and you know, doing these things, uh, maybe you can set yourself to witness to people you haven't witnessed before, but how nice to talk about the goodness of Jesus. You see, you've got to learn to harness the right spirit. And harnessing the right spirit means changes. I repeat, harnessing the right spirit means changes. We're living in a harsh world. We're living in a world where we become short-tempered, we become arrogant, we become anxious, we become stressful. You notice that? We are uptight, we become fewer in our words. No more we sit and laugh and talk and that kind of a thing. All that's gone. You want to send a message, you, you just text him and I'm coming home. You know, you know the, the talking is gone. Computer, I mean, the TV has replaced that. But God is wanting us to get into the whole time kind of person. What is that? To learn to relax. Don't be stressed out. Learn to relax. Take it a little bit easy. The world's still going to be there. The, all of the work is still going to be there. The problem's still going to be there. You can still deal with it another time. Take it a little bit easy. Tune in. Play some lovely music. Gospel music. There's some lovely, worldly music. Lovely, worldly music. Tune in and tune in to a song. Sing along with that song. And while you're singing that song, maybe you can start composing your own songs. Learn to sing along. We've got to learn to break that hardness that, that's set upon us, that's made us rigid. We've got to learn to sing. And the Bible is very clear and we, we forget to listen to the word. The word says rejoice. Rejoice. And again I say rejoice. He repeats it. Rejoice. Start smiling. Start laughing. Start joking. You know, we stopped joking a long time ago. But you've got to start having the right spirit. We have to have a godly attitude. Will give us a lovely... A godly attitude will give us a lovely attitude. Learn to be good and kind and generous and loving and courteous. Understand that hate and envy and jealousy belongs to the devil. It doesn't belong to you. Don't be bitter. Become better. Become a better you. You need to do that and you need to do it quickly because time is short. The pastor... stood at the pulpit and looked for looked for a long moment at the crowd and everybody was anxious to know what he was up to and then he pointed his finger and he said sister Erika can you please stand up And Sister Erika stood up and said, Sister Erika, 
Can you take your Bible? In your Bible, there's a $50 bill. I want you to give me that $50 bill. Sister Erika stood up, feeling embarrassed that she was called. She says, Pastor, I think you've made a mistake, Pastor. I don't have a $50 bill. The pastor says, Sister Erika, listen to me carefully. In your Bible, there's a $50 bill. I want you to give me that $50 bill. Sister Erika said, Pastor, I think you're trying to make me a fool, Pastor, in front of everybody. I'm sorry to tell you that. I feel embarrassed. I think you're trying to make me a fool. I don't know when last I heard a $50 bill. I don't have a $50 bill. I don't have it with me. I don't have it in my purse. It's not my Bible, Pastor. I think you're making a big mistake. The pastor looked at Sister Erika and said, Sister Erika, I want you to listen to me very carefully. All right? Will you do that? I want you now to open that Bible of yours. And angrily, Sister Erika took the Bible and opened it and said, Look, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And as she flipped the Bible, a $50 bill fell off. And she said, my God, where did this come from? I never had a $50 bill. The pastor said, Erika, relax, it's okay. I got your husband to put the $50 bill in your Bible. I'll tell you what, you can take that $50 bill and buy yourself one big chocolate. Just like that. What the pastor did for Sister Erika, Jesus has done for you. I, I, I deliberately told this so that you will know that Jesus has done it for you. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7, it says this, But we have this treasure in earthen earth. We are the earthen vessel, and Jesus has stepped over, and he said, Louis, here's your share. Freddy, here's your share. Mark, here's your share. Henry, here's your share. Mary, here's your share. Every one of us, every one of us have a share. This is what the Bible says. God's come in and is deposited in all of us a treasure. You have it, I have it, he has it, she has it. Every one of us has a treasure. Just like Erica couldn't believe it, maybe you, 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 you are battling to believe it, but I want you to Understand the word and believe the word because it's true. And the Bible says that God has come and put in your spirit, in your soul, a treasure. What is that treasure? The treasure is to make you become. I repeat. The treasure is to make you become whatever Whatever your heart's desire is. Whatever. The treasure can make you a top engineer, can make you a scientist, can make you a racing driver, can make you a pilot. Can, whatever your heart desire is, it is there in your spirit. Now this is what God is saying. I have done the deposit, it is there. I have done the deposit. You know, if you were waiting for some monies to come in and somebody has promised to send it your way 
And then they send the message. I've done the deposit. I put in that five grand. It's today I've done the deposit. And you see your phone make a clickling as an indicator now that the deposits come in. The deposit is in. Before it wasn't there. But then it came in. The money is in your account. It's there. Now it is your job to do two things. You can keep looking at your balance and say, hey, I'm rich. My money is there. The five grand is there. Hey, I'm so happy. Before I didn't have that five, but now I do have. I am happy. You can do that. Or you can say, well, I needed to take a little bit and do an investment. I needed to pay some expenses. I needed to give the money that I borrowed. You can go that route. As to what you do is left to you. Now God's come and he stepped in there and he is deposited in you. Maybe the ability is there to become the finest songwriter this world has ever known. It's inside. Maybe you have the ability to become the greatest singer. It's inside. Maybe the greatest poet. It's inside. Maybe the greatest preacher. It's inside. Whatever your heart's desire is, it is inside. You see, it all depends on desire. And what we desire, we make it to come to into being. In other words, a little fellow might see his daddy repairing cars. Maybe the daddy is a motor mechanic and he sees the desire, he sees his daddy repairing cars. And from a small boy, he has a desire to also become a mechanic. So what he does is he goes and watches his daddy, he hands a spanner, he helps in washing parts and, and doing stuff like that. Eventually, he becomes a great mechanic like his father. Why? The desire is there. If you have the desire for whatever you need, whatever you need, you can tap into that resources that is inside and you make it be. You can make it come into being. But too often, we look at others. We look at what they have. And we suddenly feel that we are not adequate, that we don't have enough, that we'll never make it. And as a result, we cut ourselves short. Your dream may be too big for where you are. Now let me go one step further. Don't let rejection keep you down. Don't let others determine your destiny. Your dream may be too big for where you are. You may have to get out to get it realized. Sometimes you're in a company and you get stifled by their thinking. You ever notice that? You get stifled by their thinking. And a person is known by the company he keeps. And if you are in the company of people, that don't think big, don't have high deal uh, kind of ambitions, you're not going to get very far. You may have to move out of them. Uh, you may have to get out to get, it, get your dream realized. You may have to move out. Consider an oak tree. If you plant an oak tree in a little pot plant, as a pot plant, the roots will soon grow and they'll fill up that pot. And then when the pot is full of the roots, the tree will stop growing. It'll grow no further. It becomes stunted. The problem is not with the tree. It is with the environment. Are you feeling stifled and irritable? Break loose out of that mold. Launch out into the deep. Break loose, launch out 
into the deep. God's waiting to take you places where you've never been. Understand you need to grow. Don't starve the mind. Don't starve the body. Don't starve the soul. Feed the soul. Waken the dream. Liven the vision. Pursue the goal. Be purpose driven. God wants to take you someplace. And he says in Habakkuk 2.2, 2, write, write the vision, make it plain. Write the vision, make it plain. And God is wanting us today to become people that he could be proud of. We are his children. He want to look at us as his children and feel proud. As we have children ourselves, we want our, our children to prosper. We want them to uh, become uh, people that have good jobs, isn't it? We want them to really get on in life. Just like that, just as we desire those things for our children, we as God's children, God himself has a similar kind of desire. John 1, 12 tells us, For as many as receive him, to them give he the power to become the children of God. We are the children of God. So God has got the best in mind for us. Many, wants, many want God's blessing without God. Many want God's blessing without God. And... That is a perfect plan to fail. If you leave out God, then you leave out the most important ingredient in that mix. You've got to have God. And you have God by talking to him all the time. You have God by making him your friend. You have God by getting into partnership with him. You have God by asking him to guide you along the way. God is the word. He wants the word to penetrate in our souls. Today, as we sit here, all of us need to have ears that can hear. Jesus said that he that has a year, let him hear. He that hath the year, let him hear. In other words, we've come to a stage where we come people, we've become people where we don't care a rap. We don't want to listen. We've become rebellious. Uh, we don't want to, we refuse to understand and take heed. But if we do, then God is going to take us into places we haven't been. Is going to show us things. How does God show us? By speaking to us through his word. God speaks to all of the people all of the time through his word. He does it through signs, of course. He does it through dreams. He does it through, through visions. He does it through people. He'll have people come and talk to you. But if you fail to hear in all of those directions, understand that he speaks to you always through the word. And when you're sitting, when you're resting, when you're eating, when you're walking, when you're driving, you can hear the voice of God giving directions. You see, it's only when you position right can you get directions. You remember in the olden days, you used to have the TV, you had that little bunny aerial, and you place that bunny aerial, and you see the picture is fuzzy, you don't get a clear picture, and what do you do? You shift the aerial around. You keep shifting it till the picture comes clear. Like that, we need to position ourselves, reposition ourselves, shift ourselves, to a point where we are able to have direct contact with God. God is wanting to speak to you. God is wanting to fill you. God is wanting to encourage you. God is wanting you to know that he cares. 
God is a God who cares. And right now, don't feel sad about yourself and sad about your situation and sad about the things you've gone through. The, the, don't look at the people that hate you or run you down or look down upon you. Turn away and look to God and say, God, I'm tired of all of these things. I know you can give me joy unspeakable. Take me by my hand. Take me by my hand, encourage me, Lord. Help me to stand. I want to make a life for myself. I want to become a better person. I don't want to carry on like the way I'm carrying on, Father. I know you can make it happen for me. Give me a hand, God. Give me a hand. And God will anxiously, readily run and hold you by the hand and he'll walk. You want everybody to see, look who I'm walking with. See what I'm going to do with this fellow. See where I'm going to take him. See how I'm going to lift him up. See how I'm going to push him into areas he hasn't been. See, I'm in that pushing business. And God is anxious to do some beautiful thing for every one of us. As you sit here today, that is your word. That is your word. It is God's spoken word for you that God loves you. Maybe not many people love you, not many people like you, not many people will maybe talk good things about you, but that's fine. That is fine. God loves you to bits, and God knows your heart, and God knows you is child, and God knows with him being with you, he can bring that little changer that will make you a superb fellow. Yes, he can. God's done that to millions of people throughout the world and he can do it for you. No matter how low you might feel, no matter how down you might think you have gone, you might think there's no hope. There's hope for every one of us because we have Jesus and he cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. And he wants to do some great stuff. Won't you stand to your feet this morning? <laughs> Father, as we come to a close again today, we thank you that you, the word, the penetrating word, the inspiring word, the influencing word, the strong word. Yea, God, we pray that the word will settle inside of our soul. And will remind us, oh God, that we are, we can become positioned for something great because you've made that deposit. You haven't failed, oh God. It is there. The deposit has been made in all of us, oh God. It is there. May we realize that it's there. And may we use it for our benefit. Bless us, my oh Lord, even as we take leave and go home. For this we ask in Jesus' sweet name. Amen and amen. God bless you, church.